Uh, next is Fred Klonsky from fredklonsky.com. Uh, does this work? Yes, hi. Uh, in all the introductions, uh, first of all, it's very intimidating for a K-5, a recently retired K-5 art teacher to be in front of uh, such a, an august body of elected officials, but I'm interested in uh, how many people in the room are active or retired teachers. Ah. Uh, in the, it, these last couple days have been interesting to me. I, 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 probably like you, I've been following uh, uh, the news on TV about what's going on in Washington around uh, the fiscal cliff, which now we're not allowed to say that. Was that the, that's a term we're not allowed to use anymore. It's the banned term for next year. Uh, but what's, what's interesting, when I was a kid, I, I was a comic book fan, and, I, and one of the comic books I, I was a fan of was this thing called Bizarro World, where um, everything, was, uh, everything was the opposite uh, uh, of what took place in the real world. Uh, so the sky and the ground were turned upside down. Uh, all the superhero characters were uh, opposite of what they were supposed to be. And uh, watching what's going on in Washington and what's going on in Illinois uh, makes me feel like sometimes Illinois is kind of a Bizarro World. Uh, in Washington, the fight over, over the budget and the... And, um, and uh, um, the deficits, um, has the Republican Party mainly defending uh, uh, tax breaks for the most wealthy and those who can afford to pay. And the Democrats, progressive Democrats in particular, uh, are, are uh, calling for tax, tax cuts for those who can, afford to, who can afford to pay. There's no, no sense in taxing people who don't have any money because they don't have any money. Uh, so, but, uh, uh, so you have Democrats in Washington defending uh, the social safety net, defending Social Security, defending Medicare, defending uh, uh, Obamacare, in fact, hoping to expand it. But here in Illinois, uh, Democrats seem to be the ones who are defending those who can uh, most afford to pay and uh, are asking for cuts uh, to uh, the pensions of, uh, of people who have worked their, their whole lives, uh, it, it's turned turn my world, maybe yours, uh, upside, upside down. Um, I, I thought I'd start by quoting uh, uh, Glenn Brown, who's uh, sitting over here, uh, writes a, a terrific blog about pensions. If you don't read his blog, uh, you're making a, a terrible mistake, uh, especially if you're an elected official. Um, uh, it's, it's full of information, and, and um, it's the, the address is uh, teacher, poet, musician. Did I get the order right, Glenn? Uh, but you can Google it. Glenn Brown will get you there. And what Glenn says is uh, to reduce the teacher's cola will unden undeniably diminish the teacher's constitutionally guaranteed earned benefits. Creating and passing any bill that diminishes any constitutionally guaranteed earned benefit, such as the compounded COLA that is already in place for retired and current teachers because they've acquired a vested right when they enter the pension system and are guaranteed their benefit by the Illinois uh, statute, is illegal and it's immoral. Especially considering this egregious negligence, the state's unfunded liability increased $90 billion, as you showed on the screen, since 1983. 46% of that, of that figure, $41.1 billion, was machinated, did I get that right? Was created uh, by legislators of the state of Illinois to respect contractual promises as legitimate rights and moral concerns is at stake for every citizen in the state because cheating any citizen's guaranteed rights and benefits violates moral, ethical, and legal principles explicitly avowed in the state and the U.S. constitutions. Now, coming here tonight when John, when John sent me an email, uh, uh, I really just have a, a few questions directed at our, at the, and thanking the folk, the, our elected officials for coming, our, our state reps, uh, for coming, and these questions are, are mainly directed at Representative Neckrich because you are the sponsor of one of the bills that uh, might come up this, uh, these next couple days, or certainly uh, in the coming, uh, coming session. And so my questions are these. Uh, um, isn't it true 
that your bill and any bill that diminishes or impairs the retirement benefits of state employees is in violation of the state's constitutional pension protection provision? And I, I say, yes, it is. Isn't it true that your bill or any bill that diminishes retirement benefits breaks a contractual agreement between public employees, including people in this room, teachers in the state of Illinois? And the answer to that is, yes, it does. Isn't it true that cutting benefits, such as cost of living increases, to retired seniors or denying them access, as, uh, as Maria pointed out, just access, we pay, we pay our, our premiums into the uh, teacher retirement insurance uh, plan. Denying us access to that plan, to the state's retiree health insurance plan, does nothing to reduce the dollars of pension liability. The answer to that question is yes, it does. Isn't it true that cutting pension benefits is a financial hit on the working people of your legislative district, not just the members of the pension system. For example, uh, the Chicago uh, Schools Pension Fund estimates that pension payments, not uh, uh, the payouts, account for an economic impact of benefits to your district of $17.2 million. And they estimate that creates about 129 jobs just in Representative Neckert's own district. And the answer to that question, of course, is yes, it does. Isn't it true? Well, let, me, let, me go, let me go back. Isn't it true that you know that increasing teacher contributions by 2% won't make even the slightest dent in the state's pension obligation and unfunded liability of almost $100 billion, but will cost individual teachers, people in this room, hundreds or even thousands of dollars a year? Yes, it will. Isn't it true that shifting the cost of the pension obligation to local districts will create havoc for already cash-strapped school districts and local taxpayers? Uh, I saw in the Daily Herald uh, just last week, there was an interview with one of the sponsors of, uh, of Representative Neckritz's bill, uh, David Harris, a Republican. Uh, the article said, Representative Harris claimed that actuaries say it would cost school districts only about half of 1% of their salary budgets if the pension responsibilities were shifted to them. But school officials, this is reported in the Daily Herald, school officials reported surprise about this figure, that it was so low. And Representative Harris reported downstate legislators told him, we don't believe you. Daniel Schuler, assistant superintendent, again in the Daily Herald article in Wheeling, District 21, asked whether the low cost for school district means that the bill is going to require contributions that are simply too steep for employees. Harris said the districts would not be responsible for the unfunded debt already in, the, in TRS, but Joseph Lean, a member of the Mount Prospect Elementary School District 57, said that any increased pension benefits would hurt their financially struggling district, and school officials also expressed concern that the legislature will continue to push more and more costs to them. They asked whether districts might be allowed to increase property taxes to pay for these pensions, and Representative Harris couldn't give them an answer to that question. Isn't it true that going after retirees, in spite of promises made to them when we began our teaching careers, aside from violating the Constitution, and aside from violating constitu uh, uh, contractual requirements, is a broken promise, a broken covenant with seniors and retirees, and really is morally indefensible? Isn't it true that the solution to the pension issue does not rest on cutting benefits, but on creating revenue that the current state income tax, one that taxes the rich and the poor at exactly the same rate, can't possibly raise enough money to pay the state's bills. Isn't it true that really only a progressive graduated income tax, one which asks more from those most able to pay, can raise enough money without financially crushing working folks? The answer is yes. 
Aren't you aware of the reports from the Center for Tax and, Pud and Budget Accountability from Ralph Matari, who says that uh, combined with a graduated income tax, a restructured pension debt, that we could actually address the state's revenue problems and the pension liability and would save money for taxpayers who earn less than $150,000 a year. But Representative Neckridge, you know all this. You and I and others have had this conversation with you. And, and on some of these issues, you even admit that they're, you agree that, the, that they're true. So what can we conclude? Well, we can conclude that really it seems that in the Illinois legislature, the only interest seems to be in protecting those that can most afford to pay, no matter who it hurts. And, when, and so when we say that even though the current system asks a housekeeper at the Hyatt Hotel in downtown Chicago to pay the exact same tax rate as Penny Pritzker, who owns the Hyatt Hotel, <laughs> you refuse to do anything about it. When I asked Representative Neckridge this question, why over the past four years that, that, that They've been going hard at our pensions. Why no attempt to, to deal with the question of revenue? Representative Neckert said, we don't have the votes. And I wonder, with Democratic majorities in both houses of the state legislature, and with a, go a Democratic governor sitting in the, in the governor's mansion, my final question is, why not? Why don't we have the votes? to set up a fair tax system that will actually pay the bills without cutting the cost of uh, the colas of both ac of, 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 of retirees. I, I retired in June. Uh, I'm kind of done. But I, but I retired in June. It was not my intention to be standing on the stage at East Aurora High School arguing for my pension. <laughs> this was not, and I'm sure for the, how many, reti how many retirees again? <laughs> This is not where, my, my, my sense is, this is not what you wanted to be doing on a, on a, on a Wednesday night uh, in January uh, in your retire, in, in, uh, during your retired years. And, I, and so it seems to me that the solution is clear. It's not going after our colas. It's not going, uh, it's not going after our ability to get into a, into have our health, health insurance. Um, uh, the, the point that, that, that Maria made is the point that needs to be hit on again and again. This is not a pension problem. It's a revenue problem. Thank you very much.